Hello and welcome to this episode of Weekly Strange News. There's a lot to cover today and I'm, I'm pretty excited, but today we'll be covering and looking at and headlines to pick up curious reports of the strange, the weird, and the mysterious. Anything from UFO news to science advancements, the paranormal, and stuff labeled fringe science and fringe phenomena. Any I don't mingle over in the show. I will place all the links to them in the description box below once this live show is over, as well as chapters on the timeline index. Hello and welcome to all of my first time viewers and listeners. And of course, everyone watching this live, please show your support for my work here by hitting that like button and make sure to subscribe as well and hit the notification bell as we do three live shows right here on this channel where we cover all the topics from UFOs paranormal and things that are unexplained. Also on this channel, we do post some YouTube shorts, keeping you up to date on the latest strange news. As for people that have been watching the show yesterday or followed me on Instagram at Strange Paradigms, I asked you and I said, what do you think Puck's costume is going to be today? Because I told you all the shows up until Halloween, Puck is going to have a different costume. And for those listening to this on, on a podcast platform, you're like, you always mention Puck. Who the heck is Puck? Puck is a Pukwudgie, which is a cryptid from the Bridgewater Triangle, and he's a plushie that always sits on my microphone, and he is the cutest co-host who's always smiling and who's always there for me. And he loves Halloween. Halloween is like his all-time favorite holiday. And yesterday, he was a vampire. But today, what do you think he is? I put a poll in the live chat because I want to know what you think. Right now we have 118 people watching this live and we only have 63 votes. So put your vote in before I do the grand reveal. Right now, 29% say a zombie, 36% say Frankenstein, 20% say a clown, and 14% say Zeus. Who do you think Puck is gonna be today? I'm gonna give you a few moments. And Jonas, I thank you for that. For Puck or the hashtag ramen wagon. Happy Halloween, everyone. Puck, that's going to be for Puck's next costume for Tuesday. For Halloween, by the way. So um, while people are still deciding on what he think, thinks he's going to be, or what he is, right? Because he's already dressed up. He's already ready to go. He's very excited to show you. We're going to get into our first article here. And probably the thing that might be the most significant when it comes to UFO news. Why is that? Because there was a UFO, UFO, UAP skiff that just happened. And let's get straight into it. I'm going to share just merely an image here as a visual aid uh, while we talk about this. Because right after the skiff happened on... Um, it was yesterday, but for those that are listening to this like a day later, October 26th, 2023, Anna Paulina Luna... Maskovich, uh, Tim Burchett, they all kind of gave interviews for to different outlets, even to podcasts as well, like that UFO podcast. And they were really, what they were really sharing was their disappointment. Okay, because Maskovich said, we were actually told that we don't have the clearance to learn certain things. Then you have Anna Paulina Luna stating, we're being told that we don't have access to these programs, which defeats the purpose of what we're actually trying, like, supposed to be doing. And this is significant because the skiffs are intended to go over the evidence shared by Grush, alleging that the U.S. has a secret UAP retrieval and reverse engineering program. And for some time, his evidence has not been available for these congressional members to review. Now, a SCIF is short for Sensitive Compartmented Information Facility, and it refers to a room or an installation that meets the Director of National Intelligence's security standards for discussing sensitive classified information. And this is the only place where highly classified information, such as Grush's evidence, can be shared. Previously, members of the recently found UAP caucus, an informal group of members of the U.S. Congress, like the House representatives or the Senate who come together based on common interest, political goals or beliefs said that they had they were initially awarded two skiff sessions on the UAP topic in general and also on Grush's statements. And there was a little bit of confusion here including myself thinking that Many people thought that Grush was going to be at this skiff, at like this this like underground bunker sharing information, right? That didn't actually happen. People these congressional members, to our understanding, which that information is very limited on what they're able to share, it seems that, it seems to be the case at least, is that 
whatever information they were given, they already knew, which means that probably you and I can 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 get an idea of what they talked about. We don't know what it is. We don't know what's going on here. Like that, that's probably what happened. And Tim Burchett, Tim Burchett, uh, said said very similar things. And he mentioned to the Daily Wire. He says, "I didn't expect anything from this until we get some private government contractors who are ticked off about something that's dealing with some of this stuff. They can come forward." And a lot of it's farmed out to them because it's unfoyable. And never, we're never going to get anywhere just going to be our word against theirs. And people in Congress don't have the guts to take them on because the defense contractors grease this place incredibly well. And this, we don't hear from any type of government official congressional members. We don't hear that. Um, now, Tim Tim Burchett here, he is not scared to say what he's saying. All right. He, he He's going for it. And when you're kind of poking at these defense contractors, he's 100 percent right. It's unfoyable. Yes, they work. They do contracts for the government, but they do not work for the government in the sense of being under that umbrella of the DOD, of the Pentagon, right, of the White House, they're not under that umbrella. They follow their own rules. And yeah, you can attempt to file a report, but you're not going to get anything because they don't owe you anything because they're private compared to the government, right? And and that is the best way to handle any secret is when you push it all over the place, right, especially to organizations or companies that aren't under the umbrella of someone being able to file a FOIA report, right? So, what what Tim is saying here is I think that we might only be getting good, valuable information is if someone from any of these defense contractors come forward because they're so upset or in this case, so ticked off of the things that are happening and they want to share it with the world. Now, when it comes to other government officials, are we going to receive any good information? Probably not anytime soon. There have been others that have mentioned that you might get disclosure in the next six months months we might get some type of like disclosure agreement rather soon and i would love for that to be the case that'd be amazing i'm fully for it but as things are turning out now while the bull ha ball has been rolling significantly more than usual it it might just be some kind of elusive game a, an illusion in many respects and i get a lot of comments because as i mentioned i do try to read a lot of your comments across platforms and depending on the platform, some are more brutal than others, and that's totally okay. But there's a handful of comments that say that, that this is all merely a distraction. Now, is that actually the case? Some might agree. And others are saying, well, people have been pushing for the truth. People have been pushing for disclosure for decades, since 1947. We can go all the way to that time frame. This has been a very, very real conversation. And when we begin to receive these answers, do you think it might open up the human mind to ask bigger and better questions, to be more open, maybe to be a little bit more compassionate to our fellow neighbors, to our brothers and sisters, knowing that we are just one species, maybe fighting against another or creating a sense of harmony with another, with our entire universe. Now, that's sounding very woo and very space brothery, but if you look at it from just a mere psychological standpoint, if we find common ground amongst ourselves, we are able to have this connection and fight together or be more collaborative. Do you see what I'm saying here? And this conversation, even the government talking about this, is allowing people to think outside of the box and maybe ask themselves questions that they've never asked before. And that is the big takeaway from this. And that's where the inspiration lies. I don't like being a pessimist. I, I don't enjoy it. I, it just, it, it taints my whole day. But when you're more optimistic and you see these things, and hopefully in a more positive light, yes, there's always going to be that darkness. You cannot have one without the other, obviously. But when you look at it from a more optimistic standpoint, it you feel like you're doing the right thing, that you're taking the right step forwards, and that all the work that you're doing, having these conversations, sharing these videos, sharing posts, right, which is influencing other people, you think that you might be on the right track. And that's the mentality to have versus saying, oh, I'm a failure. Oh, I'm terrible. I'm the worst. That's not going to get you anywhere. It's a very destructive mindset. And you're going to be in bed all day and you're not going to achieve anything.
But if you see it in a positive light, you are able to continue walking forward. And that's what it's all about. And, and in this case, after Luna came forward and Maskovich were giving their interview and Tim Burchett as well, they, I mean, there was disappointment on their face. They looked very upset. And they, it seems as if during that skiff, they were just rolling their eyes over and over and over again, <laughs> which <laughs> is funny a little bit, but actually terrible because they've been pushing for this since July when the UAP witness hearing was public. They have, I wouldn't say they had they promised, but we're hoping to get another UAP hearing before Christmas. And uh, they have been promised another skiff in early mid November. So that's going to be very interesting because the second meeting will review evidence from the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community with Thomas A. Uh, Monheim, which is going to be very, very cool. So I think. We are on some 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 good steps forward, but are we doing perfect? No, definitely not. Uh, Valerie, I'm hopefully your knee surgery went super well and that you're recovering nicely and hopefully you're you're eating some good food and not working too hard because any kind of surgery, like that's some scary stuff and it really takes a toll on the body. So I hope you are doing so well. And Brian, thank you so much for that as well. So I'm going to see how many votes we've gotten on what people think what people think Puck's costume is. Right now we have 145 votes, 262 people watching this live. Hit that like button if you are enjoying the show and if you're excited to see Puck's costume. But right now, 30% say zombie, 33% say Frankenstein, 22% say clown, and 15% say Zeus. Okay, did my face, facial expressions, give it away on which one it is? I'm going to ask you that right now. Who was watching my face right then and there when I was reading all of those? What do you think it's going to be? I'm going to show you right now. And damn, thank you so much for becoming a YouTube member and supporting the channel. That is so fantastic. Okay, here we go. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, actually, let me, let me take this off. Okay, I'm going to end the poll. Poll is over. Clicked it, so there's no cheating. But here it is. Ready? Ready? He's Zeus, but like a dollar store version of Zeus because his bolt is silver instead of gold. So because we only have aluminum foil. But yes, everyone, he is Zeus, the, the, the man, the man with the plan right here. And uh, yes, I got to see what he's going to be up next for Tuesday. It's another very exciting surprise that I have for you. It's already planned out. He made his own costume all by himself. I cannot take credit for this. He's very creative. He's very, he knows what he's doing. He's a seamstress, which is awesome. Ryan says, I'm a psychic. He must have known that Puck was going to be Zeus. And Chicho says, good job, Puck. Yeah, yeah. People are saying, I was right. I knew it. Y'all, y'all know what's up. That's so awesome. To be fair, Zeus wasn't even an option in yesterday's Instagram poll because Puck is very mischievous. And he almost wanted to play a trick on all y'all and say, um, whatever you picked, it's all wrong. Everyone's wrong but me, in this case, Puck, right? Because Puck wedgies, these, these gnomes from the Bridgewater Triangle, they are mischievous and they are pretty evil and they have arrows and they will shoot you. And they're also on fire as well. And they'll push you off cliffs. Like these are all terrible things. But then Puck... He's adorable. He's super cute. And he would never do that, but never turn your back on him. Okay. Getting into our next one. Okay. Cause the, the skiff, we don't have a lot of information on it. So I can't share too much, um, except the information that has come forward, but now we're getting into spooky kind of stuff. And this one is a haunted doll story that just came out. And there's a lot, I just dolls in general. Okay. They, they freak people out. And you know who did a really good show on it? Monstrum. Okay. I love Dr. Emily's art guy. I had her on the show a while ago and she, I think it was yesterday. She just posted a video on haunted dolls and why they freak people out. Watch it. It's amazing. Here is a picture of this haunted doll that we're going to be, my, is, is it showing? What's going My laptop is glitching. Oh no. What's going on? Uh, my laptop just froze. 
StreamYard froze. What the heck? What the heck? What the heck? Oh, I don't want to end the process. I'm going to end it. Okay, I just... And we are back. Are we back? I don't know, but we're gonna remove that. Are we working? Guys, that was that was freaky. This haunted doll story. It's so scary for people, right? They don't want us to talk about it. It's okay, we're gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna share it again. I had to like get out of stream yard and come back in. I'm sorry about that. It's live, you know, stuff happens. All right, I'm gonna pull this up yet again. It's gonna work this time of the haunted doll. Here we go. Did it? What? No way. It didn't work. Okay, that is wild. We're not going to be sharing the picture because obviously it's not working two times in a row. It's really a haunted doll, it seems as if. So we're just not going to show the picture of the actual doll and we're going to move forward. But you know what? Also, to be fair, this is strange news and maybe this stream is haunted. I don't know. It's the spooky season. We just can't assume anything these days, can we? No, we can't. So I'm just going to read you the story and you'll just have to look at my face while I read it. So a paranormal investigator has claimed that a doll played spooky games with her. Who doesn't want to have a friend that plays games with you? I'm all about playing card games. This is the best. But Yvonne Hides from Glasgow, Scotland, said that she was gifted a doll during a ghost investigation and has been plagued by strange happenings ever since. And Hides works for a company called the Scottish Ghost Company awesome, <laughs> which has 80 years of experience in the field of paranormal research and ghost tours, according to the website. Ever since taking this doll home, Hydes said that she heard loud knocking and footsteps and she had objects in her room that would just mysteriously move from place to place. Okay, this, this is a paranormal investigator's dream. There is nothing almost nothing better than this when it comes to a paranormal investigator. This is so sticking exciting for them. But in this case, no, she wasn't feeling this. She was not happy about this. So she believes that the doll, which she calls Agnes, very appropriate name, and was received uh, during an investigation at the East House's Pravon Hall, which is also haunted. And she says here that one of the member's friends had brought the doll to him after being on holiday in the north of England. And they bought it from a charity shop, okay, a thrift store. That's where you find all the weird things or treasures, right? One man's garbage is another man's treasure. But a lot of people hand in things like this to us. That's what he told the mirror. And he says, uh, most of the dolls I do have are all hand-me-downs so they don't bother me at all but in the night in Pravon Hall I was sat in the base room and she made me feel uncomfortable and a purported psychic medium she works with um which also felt this weird energy coming from the doll was like this this thing is haunted so we're dealing with a lot of people a lot of witnesses we're dealing with Miss Hines we're dealing with the person that gave it to Miss Hines and we're dealing with a psychic here and then she says, David, who worked as a medium, absolutely hates her. I believe I brought it home and he said that I should keep it in the garage. <laughs> and that made me feel uneasy. I brought her into the room and she sat in the spare room. 
because that's how you treat guests. You don't put them in the garage. You don't put them in the basement. Give them a nice little place. Give them a cup of tea. That's how you treat a guest. But since taking Agnes home, her dog began barking at the toy and shaking in fear. And electrical items in her home started breaking. Just days after bringing home the toy, she said she heard a loud knock at her door. <laughs> and she said that she checked her ring doorbell. There it is. Ring again, right? But didn't catch any activity. So she says here that everything was fine for a few days. But then I started to notice some knocking. My family and I heard a really loud knock to the point that we jumped and the dog was going mental. But no one was at the door. <laughs> but things were getting even weirder, she said. She says, suddenly, um, my, my dog took a dislike to the doll being in the room, which we already knew, and it started barking at the doll and shaking. And when I spoke to people about her, I was whispering as if she could hear me. And one day I came downstairs and saw one of my really heavy lamps sitting in the middle of the living room. My son came in and I asked him if he, if he had done that. And he said, no, of course not. More objects have been moved each morning, and we electrical things started to happen. I like how she said that. We have a electrical hoover, and uh, it is programmed to come out at 10.30 p.m. each night. And I was turning off the lights one morning, and it shot out, and it did its own thing. And then I looked on the website, and it didn't happen. It hadn't been registered as being active at that time. Now, I think a Hoover, and I could be wrong, it's like a Roomba, right? Like one of those automatic vacuum cleaners. Is it? I don't know. I've never heard of one of those before, but I'm just going to assume here based off of the information that I was just given. And she said that, well, this Hoover, and someone will know this. Someone will know what that is. Um, she said that when she went on the website to go see if it was registered in, ready to do its like 1030 thing, it wasn't even, it wasn't even ready. It wasn't even programmed. That's pretty freaky. That is pretty weird. But luckily for Miss Hydes, her friend David decided to take the Honda doll out of her hands. And she says that David took her home reluctantly and sat her on a chair beside his piano. And it says here that Hydes isn't the only paranormal investigator who has been toyed with a haunted doll. And we've covered a handful of other haunted doll stories, many of which that deal with paranormal investigators as well. Some get kind of spooked, others don't. But it's just one of those, it's just one of those very odd things that dolls in particular, they get haunted more than other things. Mirrors are also pretty freaky. Haunted paintings are a thing as well. We've covered those. Those are kind of fun. I will have to say, but dolls, right? They, they hit a very sensitive nerve in our heart um, because for a lot of people, especially in today's world, it's, it's a very like freaky thing to have. Of course you have Barbie dolls and you know, that doesn't bother people as much, but these more type of porcelain dolls, these old looking type of dolls from the seventies, eighties, you could even go back a hundred years, right? That's when it gets kind of freaky. And we think to ourselves, so this is not okay. This is not okay. But then you can look at the TV, the, the, the movie um, Toy Story, okay? That made me respect my toys a lot more as a child. And I probably made a lot of other people be very nice to them as well. Because one, one, you want to be friends with these things, right? That's super cool. But two, you do not want them coming out to you in the middle of the night and just taking you to who knows where, right? You don't want that. No one wants that. But I also would make sure to stand behind a door and watch the toys to see if they would move, right? And catch them in the act. Never happened. And I'm very disappointed in that one. But this is a pretty spooky story. And I'm very disappointed that I cannot share the actual picture of this doll. But it's haunted. Luckily for you, those that are listening and watching this, you can find the article link in the description box below once this live show is over. And in the article, it shows a picture of the haunted doll. So you'll be able to see it again. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to show it one more time on screen. OK, and we're just going to hope for the best here. Let's give it a shot to share this image with you. And if you are listening to this on a podcast platform, jump over to YouTube. That link is also below. Okay, here we go. No, it, it didn't work again.
I'm very shocked. I'm very, very, very shocked that I tried it one more time and I can't show you the picture. I tried. I promise. I did. I did. And it didn't work. So we're going to get into our next article here. Um, and we're going to continue on forward. And let's see how it does. But to be fair, StreamYard has been a little buggy as well. A bit weird. But now we're going to share another picture, which is definitely not haunted by any means. And watch it work. Okay? Watch it work this time. And if it doesn't, I'm, I'm, that's it. I'm, I'm over it. Here we go. What the heck, everyone? You witnessed it with your own eyeballs. You witnessed it, okay? It's the doll. It's not even streamer anymore. It did not work three times with that doll, but now it's working on Goldie here. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. <laughs> I wish I was making this up, but I'm definitely not. Okay. But getting into this one, Goldie Hawn. Hound? I'm just going to call her Han. She, we're familiar that she's come forward to the public and she's mentioned like vaguely that she's been in contact with extraterrestrials. Her, her um, late husband, or I don't know if they're divorced now, but then her husband, right, also witnessed the Phoenix Lights. And we're going to get into that just a little bit. But she, she spoke to, um, she came forward and went into detail on on her ufo encounter oh and it and see i couldn't think of his name but it's kurt russell right and he's he's not he's not passed away i just couldn't remember if they were together or not and his name escaped me but his face it's in the brain but i couldn't think of it but it's kurt russell yes and we're going to continue on to that but she just came forward and went into detail on her ufo encounter and i think it's very timely why okay first of all first of all a lot of celebrities have come forward in the recent years sharing their UFO and paranormal experiences, right? And you can take it one of two ways or in, in an amalgam of all of them, right? It's trendy. It's, it's, it's trending right now, the UFOs and the paranormal. Like, it's a cool topic to have, like, talk about, especially during October, right? But we've seen a lot of celebrities have TV shows, on, like, they're, they're called campy TV shows on these things, which is cool because they're able to influence audiences that we can't. But then you can see it of there's on the hype train. There could be other instances where they really just want to share their experience and they feel like now is an appropriate time with how this whole conversation is going. Miley Cyrus has shared her UFO encounter. Demi Lovato, uh, Camela Cabello, who how else? Kesha, her paranormal experience, right? All these very, very prominent celebrities have come forward. And again, you can take it or leave it if you believe it or not. I'm not going to tell you one way or the other. But I just think it's very timely that Goldie is also coming up and stating her story. And this was a new one to me. I thought it was very cool. And it's, it's, it's on our show slash podcast called Time to Walk, which features guests speaking uh, and talking about their lives and experiences. And a recent episode saw Goldie talk about her extraterrestrial encounter. And so this is pretty cool because she claimed that rather than being ambushed by little green men, and you know what? I'm getting really tired of hearing like just saying those words out loud. It's so boring now. But she had, in fact, asked aliens to visit her, and they did. So she says, hey, guys, come on down. Let's let's have let's have some dinner together and let's have a good time. And as the story goes, they did visit her after her invitation. She's now 77, revealed the incident that happened actually in her 20s when she was living in California uh, at a time when there was a lot of UFO sightings. And she says here, I went outside my door and I sat on the little ledge and I looked up at the dark sky and I and all I saw were stars. And all I could think of was, are we the only planet in the whole wide universe that has life on it? And she said that she called out to any aliens listening, saying she knows we're not alone and I would like to meet you one day. If it was that easy, you know, <laughs> I'd be going out every single night and saying, hey, guys, come on. I, I will I will treat you to some ramen. I will show you the culture of cats. Yeah. Yeah. I love cats. And um, Puck, the Puck Wedgie as well. 
right? But, and then just four months later, she was sitting down for a nap in a friend's car while working as a dancer, and she heard a high frequency in her ear. And she claims that she then saw three triangular-shaped heads, silver in color, with a tiny little nose, no ears, and a slash for a mouth. The aliens, she says, were pointing at me, dis discussing me like I was a subject. And she says she was unable to move, but the aliens, she says here, but the aliens touched me and it felt like the finger of God. This is really, really interesting. Um, just, just that one sentence here, because now we're bringing in the aspect of belief and religion uh, into UFOs, into aliens, which have, people have been mixing up for centuries, where there's probably been a lot of a lot of weird craft sightings in 100 years ago, 200 years ago, and people mistook it for angels or demons or God himself, right? And now in this case, she says here, it touched me and it felt like the finger of God. This is re like, why is this interesting? Because one, one is how do we know what God feels like? Right. And then people are going to say, well, it feels like love. It feels like compassion. People that have had near death experiences mention this, that they feel like this blanket of warmth and happiness. And we associate that with good things and usually a higher power. Right. That's what I found really interesting here. If she had no knowledge on aliens at all, she might have assumed that she was indeed visited by an angel or by God, but not aliens, not extraterrestrials. Do you see what I'm saying here? Language, our environment, our background, and our beliefs really impact our day-to-day -day lives and how we express and understand the things that happen to us. And just that sentence alone, we, we could do a whole thesis paper on it. Easy. OK, we're not going to do that. I'm not going to bore you <laughs> with that kind of stuff. But but you could. And it's I just find that absolutely fascinating. But she continues. It was the most benevolent, loving feeling. This was powerful. It was filled with light. OK, so now we're getting an understanding of because she felt these things, she associated it with God. Now, let's let's say for a second. OK, that um, all aliens. Let's, let, let, let's just say, OK, just for fun have a little fun between the two of us, right? Let's say that all of these extraterrestrials or maybe even interdimensionals um, are able to harness this level of energy that's like super happy and super amazing. First of all, I want to be their friends like that. Who, who wants to be sad? Nobody. We all want to be happy and living a really good, happy life, right? Every single one of us. But sometimes it does feel kind of good to be like a little sad or a little mad sometimes. I'm going to say it. No one else will, but I will. But, but your average person, you want to be really happy. Same here. And in this case, well, she's saying that it felt loving. It felt powerful. It was filled with light. Another question is, what does light feel like? Just, just a casual question I have. Um, but I find this really cool. But Goldie never forgot this experience, even though she is now 77 and this happened in her 20s. And then she went on to speak to astrophysicists and research crop circles, claiming she had once dreamed about the aliens. On the next day, a crop circle appeared where she was staying, which is also interesting. At least I think so. But each of her children, as well as her, as well as her partner, Kurt Russell, they're all actors and they um, we are aware, this is public information, that in 2017, Kurt Russell did an interview on The One Show where he had mentioned that him, himself and his son were on a plane, like because one of, they were piloting the plane back in 1997 and they saw the Phoenix Lights and then they didn't talk about it for a handful of years and then one day they're like, oh, yeah, you know what? I actually forgot about the Phoenix Lights. But now that you mention it, yeah, I did have that sighting with my son. That's exactly how the interview went. And it's so crazy. It really, really is. But I think it's interesting, okay? Because there's another aspect to the UFO phenomenon where people believe that some are pre-selected, um, but it also could run in families as well. There have been stories, alleged stories, of people having UFO encounters through the generations, like as if like they're following you of some kind. The question is, why are we just cattle? What's going on here? But in this case, you have Goldie and Kurt and the son by the name of Oliver, Oliver, they all encountered something strange. First of all, 
that's super cool. Like that is the family that you want to take out to dinner and just have like crazy stories with, right? Definitely. But also if you look at it from a, when you take a step back and you look at it from a grand a more grand scheme, right? The question is, were they pre-selected? Is Were they supposed to have this encounter? Why did they have this encounter? Is everything is as it should be? Is, it, is that relevant? Are there such things as coincidences? We need to ask ourselves these questions. Some will say yes, some will say no. And that's totally up to you. That's the beautiful thing about opinions and free wills that we all have it and we can all exercise. It's the best of our ability if we want to. We don't have to, <laughs> but it's nice to practice, isn't it? And so you don't have to agree with me. You can think that my questions are crazy or obscure. That's fine. But share with me your thoughts, your opinions, your insights, your questions as well, because I do try to read all the comments. But more than that, when you write your thoughts down, it inspires other people to share their stories, their insights. And that's the beautiful thing about these types of platforms is that we're able to like go through this together. And that's what it's all about. So I found this very cool that she just came forward and went into more detail on having a, it seems to be a close encounter with extraterrestrials that have triangular shaped heads, which is a new one. We usually hear the bulbous sized heads, right? Like super big. But what is a common denominator here is the small nose and the slit mouth. But the triangle head, no, that, that's a new one. Not super new, but we don't, we don't hear it very often. I thought it was cool. But as for that doll picture, it's haunted and I can't share it with you. And that is very disappointing for me. But getting into our next one, this one is short. It's also very, I thought it was very cool. I've never encountered a meteorite. And I think it like, I don't even think at a museum maybe, but I think it'd be super cool to see one. But I think it'd also be super sick to like have one just shoot through the house. You know, and this happened for this one family in Arkansas. And they awoke to a smell of fire and they discovered a smoking hole in their deck. And they suspected a meteorite may have been to blame, which is, first of all, like that is some very quick thinking to think to yourself. Oh, I, I'm smelling some fire. So, I don't know. Fire. Got to say it like that. It's the only way to say fire. Right. And they think to themselves, oh, it must be a meteorite. That is some stellar thinking. But John... Devane of Greenwood, which is like a, like, it's like a, a name for a night. Yeah, super cool. Said that he and his family awoke to the smell of smoke inside of their house at 3 a.m. And they set out to search for the source. And they discovered the smoke was coming from a hole in their deck, which had apparently caught fire. And we're seeing the aftermath of that here on the screen. And Devane said that the flames had been extinguished when a corner of the family's hot tub melted from the heat causing it to pour water on the deck number one if you have a hot tub in your or like on your property you're winning at life two it must have really really sucked that the meteorite ruined that hot tub okay firefighters investigated the hole in the deck and were unable to identify the likely cause other than that it appeared the fire had started from the ground and Devane said that he and his family later sorted through the debris with the magnet and found a small metallic rock in the hole left by the fire, which is very cool. The family suspects that the rock uh, might have been the remains of a meteorite, but to confirm their suspicions, it would have to be examined by the U.S. Geological Survey, a process that can take well over a year to complete. And so while we don't have the definite answers, that's their assumption that a meteorite caused this and it ruined their hot tub, which poor hot tub. But I think it's kind of cool that it happened at 3 a.m., the witching hour, right? And if you had, if we weren't in present day, let's say we were in the 1800s, right? And this ball of fire, let's, let's say the 1600s, okay? And a ball of fire comes from the sky and it ruins your hot tub <laughs> at 3 a.m. You're going to think it's a bad omen. You're going to think to yourself, okay, God's really mad at me or I did something really wrong, right? And I'm being punished for it. That's the mentality. But as humanity has evolved, we're able to apply science to 
more mundane things. But let's say it's just some average person living in the forest has never really been educated in any way. They're going to have similar thoughts that they are being punished, maybe, or that it's just it's just a really, really bad omen. Luckily, a lot of us have gone to school, have gotten a basic education, and we won't be fooled that easy. Not like our ancestors. No, sir. We can we can explain things away, but still be skeptical and still ask all the right questions. Because we we I mean we can't be full on debunkers here. We gotta look at the mundane explanations before you get into the crazy stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But this next one, oh, this one is crazy, but also it speaks to my soul like nothing ever has in my life. Why? Because sometimes when people travel, it can be exhausting, especially when you go to places like Europe where you have to walk everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and take trains and buses. Like, not everyone has a car, like, in the States. Yeah. And, it, I mean, you are really working up those leg muscles. And then also an appetite as well. And food is delicious. But China also has its fair share of lazy tourists. And this right here, we are looking at an escalator that goes up a mountain. So you no longer need to climb mountains with some nice, fancy expensive tennis shoes and a little walking stick no no sir you can just go on an escalator like this one and enjoy the view but not be out of breath and this stole my heart this one this one spoke to me so deep in my soul i said yes i now want to visit china's Zhejiang province um to look at this mountain and just go on this escalator for fun <laughs> but <laughs> Um, so this, this right here has an altitude of about 350 meters, <laughs> which is, which is pretty high, by the way. And it's, <laughs> I just can't stop laughing because this is so awesome. But the original purpose, it says here, the original purpose was to build this elevator is to solve the traffic problem in climbing the mountain. In the beginning, we considered building a cableway. However, given Cableway's limited transportation capability and high security risk, the escalator is relatively safer and has a high transportation capability, which can sustain the need for all these people, but still enjoy the scenic view. And here, I feel like you are working smarter and not harder. This is genius. How can I, how can I zoom in? Why isn't it... Okay, my laptop is just glitching all over the place. I can't zoom in, but just zoom in on YouTube. You can you can see it up. It's really pretty. I mean, this view is is stunning, but I think it's very unique to hear of of like mountain climbing traffic. I've never heard of that before. I'm also I'm no athlete, so I don't I don't follow up with athletic news by any means. But um, I haven't heard of oh, we want to go up the mountain. There's a lot of traffic right now. Come back tomorrow in or a few hours. So I hear that with cars all the time, <laughs> but not for climbing. So this is, solves the problem minus all the exercise. Hmm. We need those here. Yes. yes. I want it. I want it on Yosemite. I want it everywhere on every mountain, every every national park. No, actually, that's terrible. No, don't, don't. I shouldn't say that because it does ruin the landscape and it does affect the ecosystem in certain ways. But in this case, they probably thought all that stuff out and they said, it's okay. It's okay to do it right here. We just can't do it everywhere. So I would just make everyone lazy, but I'm already there. So it's not that big of a deal. But this next one, ooh, okay. I am a person. First of all, I'm a person. Okay, that's number one. <laughs> But number two is I'm a person that loves trying new things, but I love trying new snacks in particular. And you know who has like the craziest snacks? Japan. Japan, it, it's always it's always surprising us. We've covered dumpling flavored soda. Um, <laughs> we've covered like flavorless mints from Japan. Um, and this one is no exception. Oh, whew, thought I wasn't going to share for a sec. But this is a Japanese company that creates gummy candy that tastes like imaginary fruit. I'm in. I mean, you sold me right there. Take my money. Take my money. Yes, imaginary fruit. That could be anything. That could be li you could you could make gummy flavored Coca-Cola and say, "Oh, 
it's an imaginary fruit, give it a shot, right? Anything. But at the same time, the, 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 that, that combination of those two words, take my money. But <laughs> And here's an image of one of those. Uh, I'm sold on it, by the way. And then here's another one of how they look in a bag, which looks a little bit less delicious between you and me, but I would still try it in a heartbeat. The only downfall with like gummies, and yes, I still eat them, but I don't like reading the ingredients on gummies because I don't like how they're made with gelatin. And that's just a personal thing. I just, but if I don't know it, then it's okay, <laughs> right? <laughs> but just the concept of gelatin and also like raw eggs, like whipped eggs, that also bothers me, except mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is an exception to that. But last year was a great one for gummy candy producers and the market continued to expand through 2023 with fruit flavored gummies being the most popular as the ones that we're seeing here. And while there are plenty of fruit flavors to choose from, like literally every fruit on the planet, oh, like lychee, oh, lychee flavored candy is 10 out of 10. Well, this company says, okay, we're going to outdo all of them. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to make some random flavors and say it's imaginary fruit. That's some good marketing right there. Those people are getting paid well. At least I hope so for those noggins right there. But according to the Kanru official website, which is the name of this candy company, the star-shaped Karaspika only grows in the mountainous region of Blue Knife. It's a cool name. Where temperatures drop to below 50 degrees Celsius in the winter. <gasps> And it's very difficult to obtain as when the fruit ripens on a full moon night around the winter solstice, the fruit ex explodes as a mechanism to spread its seeds and pieces of this fruit fly at a speed of 300 meters per second in a direct hit can be fatal. I don't. OK, so I think this is an imaginary fruit. Like <laughs> I almost bought it for a second. But I said, wait, that doesn't. <laughs> That doesn't make sense. Um, but yeah, this is the imaginary fruit, and that's the backstory for the imaginary fruit. I like I'm blushing, like I'm turning red. I feel really silly right there, but that's also hilarious. <laughs> but that's very cool. You get to be creative and make yummy gummies. That should be a brand. Is that not a gummy brand name? Yummy gummies? Because it definitely should be if it's not. Someone patent that right here, right now. Go ahead and do it. <laughs> but with this. They have gained their popularity across Japan. People are really enjoying this so much so that they've also made this imaginary fruit flavor into energy drinks, as well as um, obviously gummies um, and other products as well. So they're on top of it. They know what's up. And I am very tempted to buy them, actually. You know, we also covered, and you can get it on Amazon, um, like mac and cheese flavored candy canes clam flavored candy canes pickle flavored hot dog flavored people are creative and in some cases it doesn't work oh even pho flavored candy canes and last christmas air like december i tried to find them on amazon to buy them obviously right and they were sold out and i, I was very sad because i don't know it'd be like probably like salt or something but i would have tried it and i would have shared it with you and said hey get this or definitely don't get this <laughs> hmm. hopefully you are enjoying these articles some people are, are making some funny jokes moon at noon is already copywriting the name yummy gummies it, it has to be a name already it really does and he says soy sauce flavored ice cream is that a thing is that like actually a thing because i might try it Cindy, thank you for that. For the imaginary fruit, that is so nice. Thank you. If you are enjoying the show, hit that like button. It lets me know that you're enjoying the show. And it also tells Puck that you like his Zeus costume as well. Okay? Because that's what it's all about. Puck, Puck needs that confidence for his next costume. So hit that like button. For him. Not even for me. Just for him. Oh, and Laura, thank you. I'm sorry I missed that. I might have been during the glitch area, but thank you so much, as always. Y'all are too kind to me. Who said jerky flavor? No jerky from the sea. I don't know what that means, but it caught my attention. Fish sausages? Yeah. Doesn't sound so bad. Yeah. <laughs> but people, you're making me laugh in the live chat. You're too funny here. Okay, but let's back it up. I have a question for you before we 
finish today's show. My last question is, what is the weirdest food or flavor food that you've ever tried? Okay. I want to know. I really do. I'm very, very curious. I cannot think of anything incredibly strange. I know like pickled snow cones. That's pretty weird. And I've tried that. I, I don't, I don't dig it. I don't like it. I actually just don't like pickles altogether or anything soaked in vinegar, but that's just me. Um, that's probably like the weirdest thing I've ever had, but I want to know about you. What's like the strangest thing that you've ever eaten or like a flavor of something that you just thought I'm going to try it just for fun but it might not be my best friend. Ice cream beans are a thing. Like vanilla bean ice cream, like that's pretty good. Or um, I know parts of China, they make like taro ice cream. That's also pretty good too. And black bean ice cream, I think is a thing. Also pretty good. <laughs> Marmite, yeah, that one's intense. People in the States, they think I can just like smudge Marmite on toast like Nutella. That stuff is so salty. <laughs> you could put just a, like a little, a wee bit, you know, and then you're okay with toast and butter, right? But when you when you plop that on like Nutella, mm -mm, it's gonna put you off for life. <gasps> Cindy, that one, that is that is weird. <laughs> I think you beat all of us there. Cobra says taco flavored pork rinds. That's interesting. Um, smoked seaweed. Seaweed is so good. Like, all flavors of seaweed. Hot sauce on ice cream, says Shane. Yeah, I got that sweet and that spicy. I can dig it. Okay. Thanks, Valerie. Hi there. <laughs> and says, wasabi does taste like gasoline. Well, it cleans up those sinuses so quick. It does. It's, it, it has some benefits to you, but I, I, haven't, I haven't seen um, that connection between gasoline and and wasabi. <laughs> that is too good. If you enjoyed the show, hit the like button. Also follow me on Twitter at eyes underscore on the skies for all of my updates and news. Um, if you want to continue this conversation, bring it over to the Discord server with 2,700 other like-minded members. Share your thoughts, your insights, your experiences, and more. I know one of my amazing moderators will share that link in the live chat for you to go and to start checking out our Discord server. Also consider following me on Instagram at strange paradigms where I share pictures and short videos as well. But if you are enjoying all of the content that you're seeing right here on this channel, be a Patreon supporter where all the funding goes straight to the channel to puck the puck wedgie and to the RV fund where I'll be traveling the United States, hitting all the UFO and paranormal hotspots, documenting it and taking you on the journey with me. You do not want to miss Tuesday's show tales of the strange and unexplained. Why? Cause it's Halloween. And I got some surprises, and so does Puck, all for you. So please subscribe and also hit the notification bell so that you do not miss that live show on Tuesday. That is it for today. I will see you on Halloween. Be safe, and remember, keep your eyes on the skies.